This is Twit. A while back, I switched from T-Mobile to Google's Project 5 for my cell phone service. And shortly after the switch, I tended to notice an uptick in spam and robocalls. Now, I'm not entirely sure that there's any direct correlation between my carrier switch and those spam calls, but I'm definitely getting more of them. And I even tweeted about this. I've heard from a number of you saying that you're getting lots of annoying calls too. So let's take a look at a few ways that you can tackle these annoyances. You might not get rid of them entirely, but we can do our best to minimize them as best as possible. First of all, the really easy one, and the jury's kind of out on whether this makes a lick of difference or not, uh, but it's baseline minimum that you head over to the FTC's National Do Not Call Registry and get your phone number registered. This should prohibit telemarketing outfits from calling your number once it's on the registry. This won't include some robocalls, things like political ones that you're probably going to start getting more of as we get closer to November, but it's a great place to start. Next, head on over to your carrier and check out your service plan. Each of the four major carriers here in the U.S. offer services to customers that will shield you from unwanted spam calls in some way. AT&T's is called Call Protect Plus, and that's an additional fee with that service. It allows for detailed information on incoming calls with reverse number lookup and customized call blocking. Verizon offers spam call rejection via caller name ID, though that's only a available through an iOS app for now. So Android users, you're waiting. T-Mobile offers a number of specific services for T-Mobile and Metro PCS customers, specifically Scam ID for network level scam identification and Scam Block to keep the calls from reaching the phone altogether. That's the one you really want. And Sprint offers premium caller ID for a fee of $2.99 per month. It's integrated in Sprint phones, so you don't need a separate app there and includes robocall spam protection on Android. Now, you can take on robocalls and spam calls on your own right now if you don't mind doing a little legwork. Identify a call that happens to appear in your call log on your phone app and open up expanded information for that call and you're likely to find a block number option, which you can tap to make sure you don't see it next time a call or text comes through from that number. But let's face it, that's a little bit more work than you might want to do. So check out a string of apps that are designed to do this for you automatically. I've actually been using an app called Mr. Number for a few months now that flags incoming calls for me to tell me that it's suspected to be spam. And in the settings, I can go one step further to say, don't show those spam calls to me. If it's on the list, send it directly to my voicemail and block it in the future. Mr. Number even gives me detailed information from its own database on other users' histories with that number so I can know all of the background of who the call likely was from and what they were peddling. Other apps that do similar things like this include Truecaller and Haya, just to name a few. Do take a look at permissions, though, on these apps. They do usually request access to your phone call log and contacts, and that's to better identify the good calls versus the bad calls. That'll definitely make some of you uncomfortable, so take from that what you will. And beyond that, Google even has your back. A year ago, you may remember the Google Phone app rolled out a feature that identifies spam callers with a huge red banner when those calls come through. It's sure to get your attention so that you don't answer. And Google actually went one step further a few weeks ago by including a new option in the caller ID and spam settings to automatically filter spam calls so you don't get them in the first place. Now, this is opt-in, so you likely haven't experienced the benefit of this if you haven't turned it on yet. Take your phone back into your own hands. You now have plenty of ways to do it, or so I hope. I'm Jason Howell, helping you use your Android devices better each and every week on All About Android here on twit.tv.